Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Uh, my last video I mentioned that I was going to do a comparison video using makeup on the jelly print compared to the pan pastels because I do tend to use these a lot on the jelly print jelly plate and I know not everybody has them. Um, so I've been keeping my eye out on drugstore brands. So this I showed New Year's Eve stream 2022 I think. Um, I did use this on the jelly plate compared to uh, pan pastels. These are shimmery and they worked pretty good, but I've been keeping my eye out for more some primary colors and I did find this palette from Revolution. Um, it's a brand uh, it's called Makeup Revolution London and this um, particular set is called Marvelous Mattes and I just liked the um, selection of colors in here and I thought that would be a good comparison to um, the pan pastel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I haven't done magazine transfers in a while, I thought it'd be fun to do some of that. So I'm going to do two fairly similar. Um, this is the cover of a magazine so I'm hoping it's going to work. I think it should but um, we're going to compare uh, the makeup on this one to the pan pastels on this one. So I'm going to go ahead, I'll probably start with the makeup and then do the pan pastels, but I'll show them split screen so that I can use um, similar colors. All right, let's get started. So the first thing I do is I do my image transfer and um, I do have a lengthy video with lots of details and helpful hints about that, which I'll link um, in the description below. I did have a bit of trouble with this one on the left. Um, I had a hair in the paint and then uh, because it was a magazine cover it was kind of a thicker paper and I had trouble getting it down without bubbles but the face turned out pretty good so I just decided to just go with it. So you lay down your thin layer of acrylic paint, you put your image down, you just give it a little bit of a press, get the bubbles out and pull it up. So you can see where the paint um, was left behind that was where the bubbles were so I just kind of clean that up with the baby wipe. And these are just for my personal use uh, these are copyrighted images so I'm just using these in art journals and I don't sell these. If you wanted to sell your work though you could use your own images uh, on a laser print and do the same process or you could use prints from uh, copyright free sources. So I decided to put a little bird on each of these on their shoulder. I use a mask from PM Artist Studios. This is a Susan Dufresne design. So I put the um, mask upside down on my 5x7 jelly plate. I brayer on some black acrylic paint, pull up that little mask, flip it over, stick it on the big 8x10 jelly plate, and then I lift it off. And then it's important to let everything dry before you uh, start adding the pan pastels. Uh, on the guy, he didn't really have any shoulders, so I drew some shoulders in with a black Posca acrylic paint pen, and it's important to let that dry. It does take a little bit longer to dry. Now, it probably would have been smarter to do uh, each of these faces in the same order. Uh, I didn't. I kind of jump around. Um, the most important thing to note is that I try to match the colors that I used in the makeup. So I actually did the makeup one first, and then I used that as a reference to do the guy on the right. Um, you'll kind of see at the top of, uh, just above the guy, you can see the makeup sitting there. So that was so that I could reference the shade of the color. Um, the pan pastels, just they're just so creamy and they go on so easy. Um, I'm using my special tools that come with the pan pastel when you buy them. They come with the sets or you buy them separately if you buy the pans individually. And the pans are run about $10 each. I did get mine, um, I have two sets. I got two 20 um, color sets. The portrait set and then another set. I can't remember which one it was. And I did manage to get both of those on sale. So you can find some savings if you wanted to make the investment in the pan pastels. And then I did add um, some individual colors and I bought two uh, plastic trays. The sets don't come with the trays, at least they didn't when I bought them. And each tray, the larger trays, hold 20. So I have 40 pan pastels. Um, I also added in some metallic ones, which I'm not showing today. They also have some pearlescent colors. I didn't buy any of the pearlescent colors. Instead, I bought the pearlescent pan that you can add to your regular colors to make them pearlescent. I haven't really used that much yet. I also have the colorless blender pan, which I use more if I'm applying it on paper. And um, if you're applying directly on paper, you definitely do have to seal pan pastels, I find. Uh, but with the jelly plate, because you're 
picking it up with acrylic paint, it tends to stick the pan pastel down and I find it's quite stable and I'll demonstrate that at the end. So basically I'm saying you don't, I don't have the whole set, you don't have to get the whole set. I'll talk about that a bit more at the end. So this video I wanted to just show you the options. Like if you wanted to see if you like using a dry medium on the jelly plate, you could maybe get the makeup and play with it. And if you do like it, then maybe invest in some of the pan pastels not all of them, just a few. You can buy sets individually, like you can buy individual pans and you can buy smaller sets um, of different color combinations. Recently, um, Pan Pastels was bought out by Golden, so I don't know what the pricing is gonna do or how they're gonna package them. So, you know, this information that I'm giving you today could change, but that's the nature of art and art supplies. It's always changing, prices are changing, availability is changing. Um, Speaking of art supplies, you know, I'm using makeup, but there are other art supplies that you can use to substitute pan pastels. Again, I don't find them as creamy. There's um, soft pastels. I have a set by, uh, I think it's Faber Castell. It's soft, but it's really too hard to use on a jelly plate. You would scratch your plate. But I know there are some quite soft pastels, which um, other people use on the jelly plate. I just don't have any of those because I just find my pan pastels gives me everything I want in a soft pastel. Jane Davenport also has a set of uh, sort of chalk pastels that you can use. Um, I don't have any, but uh, they seem to work pretty well as, as well if you don't want to do the makeup route. But again, um, you know, you'd have to price it out and see what works for you. You might notice that every once in a while I lift up my 8x10 jelly plate um, because I do have it mounted on, actually it's an acrylic sign holder that I bought at Staples. And you know, that's handy because you can actually see what's going on on the surface because that's what's actually going to show on your final pull. Now with the pan pastels and the makeup, whatever you put down first is what's going to show the most. So let's say you put down uh, a pink and you didn't like it and you said, oh, I want it yellow and you put yellow on top. Well, it's not going to look yellow when you pull it. It's going to look like whatever you put down first. There's a little bit of blending you can do. Um, but really, you know, what you put down first is what you're going to get. So when you flip it over, it's kind of a nice way to see, you know, where you're going or if you've missed any areas. Um, these stencils, the flower stencil, and I think the other stencil is called Puzzle or something like that. Those are also from PM Artist Studios. And, uh, you know, I will, like I said before, put a link in there. So I'm trying to use very similar colors on each portion. Um, the birds, I you know, did some red on the makeup and it really wasn't very strong. So I added like a darker maroon. Uh, the pan pastel on the belly, you can see that red is just so pigmented with the pan pastels. I put a bit of the baby blue from the makeup on the bird and that baby blue really didn't have much pigment to it. Um, you know, compared to the pan pastel, that was a big difference. But different makeup brands might have different colors that might work better. So I'm not saying you have to get this you know, palette of makeup, but I'm thinking maybe a, a mid-range quality because you don't want to be spending a lot of money. If you're going to be spending a lot of money on the makeup, you might as well buy the Pan Pastel. That get, you get way more product in the Pan Pastel. Uh, the other thing, I did use makeup applicators to apply the makeup because I thought if you're just playing and you only bought the makeup, you're not going to have the soft tools. Um, and I don't think that was the issue in putting down the makeup because uh, at the end I do apply the white to the, um, the the fellow there. I use a makeup applicator to apply the white tan pastel um, around his glasses and that seemed to work fine. So I don't think it's a difference in the applicators. I think it's really just the pigmentation of the pan pastel that's so creamy. And with the soft tools with the pan pastels, I am wiping off on a dry paper towel between colors. I have one applicator that's more for like um, the warm colors and then a different applicator that's more for the cool colors. And you, I, you can't see me do that, but I'm doing that off screen. For the makeup, um, the applicators, I basically, you know, had some applicators I bought. And for that, I'm just trying to use a fresh applicator for each color. So I'll use both sides and I'm trying to just um, not contaminate it but the soft tools seem to have no problem picking up fresh pigment once you've wiped them off. 
So I'm going a bit crazy with the colors. I'm trying to use as many um, colors of that makeup as possible so that I can get uh, a good sense of how the different um, colors work on the jelly plate. And I find this process just really relaxing and enjoyable. Um, I think I mentioned that, you know, the nice thing about using pan pastel and or makeup on the jelly plate, it's a dry medium. Uh, you can take your time. It's, you know, you're not going to lift it up. You can see I put the stencil right over where I already had some pan pastel and it didn't disrupt it. Um, you could just take your time to fill in the areas that you like. Uh, it's a lot more uh, customizable, I suppose. Here I'm adding a bit of blue to her eyes. And then I add some white to the whites of her eyes because I'm not planning to use white to pick this up. I'm going to use some light colors so that, you know, the vibrancy shows through. But I will do a swatch on um, picking it up with white at the end. And we'll talk about that in a bit. So there you saw me lifting it up to see if I you know, had everything covered. And I'm putting the tools away and I'm getting ready for the paint. Now with the left one, the lady, I forgot to press record. So you can't actually see what I did. I basically did the same thing that I did on the, on the guy on the right. So I put the two strips and I'm using my very large seven inch brayer for this. And that takes a little bit of practice. I'm getting a bit better at doing this ombre. But I just like with image transfers, I like that interest of having, you know, an ombre or it, different unexpected colors in the background. That's why I didn't want to pick it up with the white. So you give this a good rub. Um, I set it aside to dry um, quite a few minutes, at least 10 minutes. Uh, really, there's no time frame uh, allotted. It's however long it takes for it to dry in your environment. Now, as I'm pulling it off, you can see there's definitely a pan pastel and makeup left over on the jelly plate, which is what I expected. Um, you can see on the pan pastel, there's a lot more left over. I actually did pull a ghost print of that before I clean the plates. And we'll talk about these two prints in a moment. First, I'm just gonna show you that to clean off the pan pastel. Here I am just applying the um, baby oil. If you don't like the smell of baby oil, you can use uh, mineral oil. Um, check out PM Artist Studios for more information about that. And so I'm rubbing it in, um, making sure the plate's all coated. And then I use a baby wipe to, you know, firmly but gently scrub it off. And I rotate the baby wipe after I've got a fair amount off. Uh, sometimes you'll see you have to add more uh, baby oil, which I do on the pan pastel plate because uh, I had so much pigment. So here's both prints side by side. As you saw, I tried to use similar colors on each and I picked them up with the same colored paint, uh, portrait pink on the lower half and rose pink on the top half. And first glance, they're both pretty good. I mean, obviously I would change some of the blending, but just to look at the pigmentation, I think they're both pretty good. Um, this one is the one that we did with the makeup, the Revolution Makeup London. Uh, this is the matte, Marvelous Mattes, and um, this one, just to remind you of the price, uh, retail is around $16 to $20 uh, for this Canadian, probably less in the U.S., and I did have a percentage off and a coupon, so that only cost me a couple bucks. So um, the pigment's nice. On first glance, it looks quite good. When you compare it to this one, however, you notice that uh, the yellows and the oranges aren't quite as bright, but the purple and the um, magenta are quite nice. Um, the baby blue or teal blue was very pale on this set, and the red was a little bit pale. I had to go to the darker red. Um, so I thought I tried to use uh, matching colors. Um, so what I did as well, because I picked it up with colored paint, that might have muted it a little bit more. So I did a swatch. Um, I'll show up in the corner how I did the swatch. So here's the pan pastels and the makeup. Pan pastels and the makeup. Uh, this one's a bit grungy because I used some Posca on there and it wasn't dry. But So this is, uh, you know, pretty comparable. I mean, you can see when I was swatching, I did have to spend a lot more time adding the color on for the uh, makeup. The pigment 
was quite light and it took a while for it to get on there. So it's not quite as smooth. Uh, the pan pastel was just creamy and just kind of went on there like, like a dream. Uh, these two skin tone ones are very similar. I put the white, I picked up with black paint. The pan pastel is definitely a little bit um, brighter, but I don't know if I would use that for that technique anyhow. Um, overall, if you're wanting to play with pan pastels, like experiment, um, but you're not sure, like on the jelly plate, but you don't want to go through the expense, for example, each one of these tin, these uh, containers probably averages around $10 uh, Canadian. So cost-wise, I mean, that's a big investment to get pan pastels. I said in previous videos, if you wanted to get pan pastels, you can maybe just get some of the the main like main colors that appeal to you like if I was just getting a few colors I would probably get um, this magenta this red orange and the yellow probably a purple and a couple different blues and then you could get a white and a black and then from there you could make um, different tints and shades of your favorite colors if you wanted to do that or if you want to experiment with you know a good range of colors you could buy some makeup um, I'm not sure if dollar store makeup would be as pigmented. This is, um, you know, fairly good quality makeup, kind of probably mid, mid range. I don't know much about makeup, so don't quote me on that. Um, so if you wanted to just play with a few colors, you could get, you know, a makeup set that you, the colors appeal to you. And just as a reminder, um, the paint, the acrylic paint used to pick it up pretty much seals the makeup and the pan pastels in there. So that's kind of cool. Uh, you do have to clean off your jelly plate with um, mineral oil or baby oil. I just use baby oil because that's what I have on hand and it, it's easy. Um, I also pulled several copies. So this was the first pull. This is the ghost print. This is the second ghost print. This is the third ghost print. So you can see the pan pastel is still giving quite a bit of color. Um, and that was just for interest sake. I don't know if you would ever use that for anything, but I just thought it was kind of fun. I uh, might make a nice uh, journal page, or swatch page or something, or you could doodle on there. Anyhow, I am getting off topic and hitting a rabbit trail. So can you use makeup on the jelly plate instead of pan pastels? Yes, you can. Will you get as good a result? Pretty close. Um, will it be as easy? Well, I found I did have to kind of really work the pigment to get it on there. Whereas the pan pastel, I just used a little bit and it was, um, super easy. One thumbs up for the makeup, two, three, four thumbs up for the pan pastels. I do use my pan pastels for other things as well. I use it for color books. I use it for, um, mixed media. I don't just use it on the jelly plate, but I do enjoy using it on the jelly plate because you can control where you're putting your colors. So that's the main reason. And it's just fun. So thanks for watching. I hope you found this helpful and um, I hope this encourages you to, to play and to um, enjoy using your jelly plate.